as we all know, is the 20th anniversary of the terrorist attacks on New York and Washington on September 11th of 2001. And I want to offer some thoughts about that, but I want to begin by making a confession. Unlike many Americans who are old enough, and I certainly was old enough, I did not spend the morning of September 11th watching the footage of those airplanes hitting those towers. I was not glued to my television set. But I have a good reason for that. And the reason for that is that I was a few blocks away when it happened. I heard those airplanes hit that building. I remember like it was in slow motion the minutes and hours after that. And I certainly remember walking six miles, maybe it was seven miles home on that hot day with my pregnant wife trying to get home, worried about our young child, trying to get home to safely, safety. And while many Americans have a visual memory, my most profound memory, the one that will never go away, is of hearing that tower crumble. If you haven't heard a hundred-story building crumble, consider yourself fortunate. And the gasp of the thousands of people, me included, when we heard it, we all turned around. We were somewhere around Greenwich Village at that point, making our way uptown. So that day is seared onto my memory. It is one of those public and private events. I felt it personally. I remembered where I was, but it affected all of us. There are other events like that. I remember the 1989 earthquake in San Francisco, the early days of COVID here in New York City not that long ago, the day that we came back from recess in sixth grade and our science teacher, who was a nun, came into class and told us that George Moscone and Harvey Milk had been assassinated. These memories never will leave me. But I've also had a lot of time, 20 years actually, to think about this. And what I'm interested in thinking about and talking about a little today is how America processed those events. Because what was primarily an attack on one city was rightly understood as an attack on the United States. But it was, after that, misinterpreted. Not misinterpreted, but misunderstood and misdiagnosed. And what became this terrible moment, we did exactly what our enemies hoped we would do. In the days after September 11th, in the weeks and months, many smart pundits wrote that the terrorists were wrong. They thought they could destroy the United States, but we're stronger than that, and we are stronger than that. And this is a huge, massive country with a lot of good people, and you take down a few buildings and you attack the Pentagon, you're not going to destroy the United States of America. And the people who wrote that were right. However, they were also wrong. And the reason was the terrorists may or may not have understood it, but they were attacking a country where the deep contradictions and weaknesses and histories, if exposed, we would destroy ourselves. And on September 11th, we began the process where we are now on the cusp of destroying ourselves. And it began by, mis by telling a story about September 11th, a story that now every inch of this country is vulnerable to terrorist attack. When the truth is, within hours after September 11th, or the attacks themselves on that day, it became exponentially more difficult for a jihadist attack to occur on the United States. And if you don't believe that, think about all the maybe cases that don't get all that much attention that we foiled those attacks because it became tougher. We got smarter. But we use this as another excuse to go to the rest of the world and engage in wars that in the long run were very, very damaging for the United States. But that's not all we did. We began to tell a story, redefine our role in the world. We were the hegemon on September 10th, 2001, probably the most powerful country in world history. And within 48 hours, we began a, a story that we were the victims. We were the ones of uh, uh, justice being treated unjustly. We were the victims. I want you to think back on the early days after September 11th. And if you weren't around, I'll tell you. There was this question that was asked, why do they hate us? Why do they hate America? It's a good question. A lot of people hate America. I don't, but a lot of people do. And why do they? And they have all kinds of reasons. And some are bad, and some are worth thinking about. And there is no reason that is good enough that you should go and fly an airplane into the World Trade Center. That is, that is obviously beyond the pale, as are many acts that are done by terrorists and militaries around the world. But the reason we settled on was not they hate us because we use up more than our share of resources in the world. They hate us because of our military actions all over the world. They hate us because we are imperialists. No, those are harder things to think about. What we decided was they hated us because of our freedom. And there was an element of truth to that. They do hate us because we allow, at that time, fewer, but now more rights for LGBT people, because we do allow more gender equality. But that's not really why they hated us. But 
we told ourselves they hate us because of our freedom. And because of that, we never had to look deeply as to maybe what we could do differently. Not to make ourselves safer in the short run, but to make ourselves safer in the long run and to be an actor more on the side of justice. And we misanswered that crucially important question because in the jingoistic heat of the moment, you weren't allowed to say anything else. And I believe we've been paying a price for that for the last 20 years. So on this very solemn day, think back to where you were. Think of the people who died that day, the people in, who, who, who rushed into those buildings and are still sick today, 20 years later, because of diseases, the people in the communities, and the people all over the world who have become less safe because of that, as well as the people who the United States military has killed in the last 20 years, because that's also part of the damage of the attacks of September 11th, and we're not entirely innocent on that one. So take this solemn day to reflect. It's one of the last beautiful days of fall, just like, first beautiful days of fall, just like that day 20 years ago was as well.